Hello everybody, welcome back to another CB 398 assignment guide. In this assignment guide, we're going to be covering assignment number eight, question number one. And don't worry, this assignment is actually pretty easy, so hopefully you guys have a nice, easy reading week. I hope right now at least you guys are relaxing. Don't even worry about the assignment. It's very quick. You guys should be able to do it in no time. So hopefully again, enjoy your reading week and uh, worry about the assignments a little bit later. Now, assignment eight is all focused on strain energy, which is why I say it's pretty easy because as you guys will see with strain energy, it's basically using the same formula over and over and over again. So once you guys get it, as we'll see in question number one, question number two, question number three, it's all going to be the same process. Nice and easy, not too much to worry about. So let's look at question number one. Question one says a linear elastic isotropic material with a shear modulus G of 20 MPa and a bulk modulus K of 15 MPa is stretched such that the small strain matrix is given by and it gives us our nice small strain tensor. So this is very reminiscent of older questions that we had where we're either given the strain tensor or the stress tensor and we're asked to do a bunch of operations with it. Now in this case we're given the strain tensor and the question wants us to do three different things. The first one is determine the strain energy stored during the deformation. As you guys will see this is going to be the main part of the question. Once you guys do question A Part B and Part C are actually relatively simple, where Part B wants the deviatoric strain energy stored during deformation, and Part C asks for the volumetric strain energy stored during deformation. And this kind of rem reminisces you guys about when we talked about stress, how we said, okay, well, our stress tensor can actually be decomposed into a deviatoric stress tensor and a volumetric stress tensor. And as you guys are going to see with strain energy, we can do the exact same thing. So let's try and figure out how to solve part A, because again, part A, that'll be the main part to this question. The first thing that we have to realize is unlike previous questions where we always have the Young's modulus E and the Poisson's ratio nu, this question kind of shakes it up a bit by giving us the shear modulus G as well as the bulk modulus K. Now a lot of you guys can be asking, well, do I need E and nu, the Poisson's ratio and the elastic modulus? Well, you guys will see that yes, you do. So we're going to have to solve for them. And that's going to be the first part of this question. How do we solve for those two variables? Well, let's take a look at the shear modulus. As we can see from the formula for the shear modulus, it's just a function of the elastic modulus E as well as the Poisson's ratio nu. So therefore, G is equal to E divided by 2 multiplied by 1 plus nu. So it's a pretty simple formula, nothing too crazy. How about the bulk modulus? If we look at the bulk modulus formula for K, it's the same thing where it's a function of both the Young's modulus E and the Poisson's ratio nu, in that K, our bulk modulus, is equal to E divided by 3 multiplied by 1 minus 2 nu. Now, these look pretty simple uh, when we look at them individually, but if we take a step back and look at them, what we can see is we have two equations with two unknowns. We know G, we know K, However, our only unknowns are going to be E as well as nu. So we can do system of equations and we can actually solve for both E and nu. So that's going to be the first part of this question. What is my elastic modulus? What is my Poisson's ratio? Well, I got two equations, two unknowns. I can easily solve for them. So again, that's going to be the first part. And once we're done with that, we can get into the actual part of the question where it says, what is the strain energy density for this uh, stretch? Well. We know that the general formula for strain energy density for a linear elastic isotropic material, and I'm highlighting that because that's a very important uh, piece of information, is given by this. And I know what you guys are thinking, Clayton, what are you doing? I don't like summations. Well, I know you guys don't like summations, so don't worry. We can simplify this out into the following formula, where our strain energy density is simply going to be one half multiplied by sigma 1 1 times epsilon 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 times epsilon 2 2, etc., etc. Now, one little thing to notice, though, is once we get into the shears, so sigma 1, 2, sigma 1, 3, we multiply them by two times the shear strain. So instead of epsilon 1, 2, epsilon 1, 3, we have gamma 1, 2 and gamma 1, 3. So that's a very important distinction to keep in mind. Now, if we look at our question, we can see that this formula is not too bad because right now we know all the strains. We're given that strain tensor, so therefore all the epsilon ij's and the gamma ij's we know. So if we take a step back and look at this formula, well the only thing that we really don't know are going to be those stress components, sigma 1 1, sigma 2 2, sigma, sigma 1 2, etc, etc. So the only thing that we're going to have to do for part A is solve for those stress components. 
Now, luckily for us, we have a linear elastic isotropic material. So as you guys know, we have a very specific elasticity tensor that we can use to convert from stresses to strains or from strains to stresses. Now, even though this looks really gross because it's a six by six matrix, it's not too bad. If we look at everything in the center, we can see that the elasticity tensor is a function of both the Young's modulus E, which we now know because we solved for it, as well as the Poisson's ratio nu, which again, we also solved for. So everything in the middle there, we're good to go. If we look at the very right hand side, we have the strain vector. Now, since we have the strain tensor, we know everything about that strain vector. So the whole right hand side, we already know. So if we know E, nu, as well as the strains, well, therefore, we can solve for the left hand side, which is going to be our stress vector. And that contains all of the stress components that we need to solve for the equation in the previous slide. So at this point, after you find the stresses, all we simply do is substitute them into the equation above, and we're good to go for part A. Now, if we look at part B, we start talking about something a little bit different, which is the deviatoric strain energy density. Luckily for us, there's actually a very nice formula for it, where the deviatoric strain energy density is simply the von Mises stress squared, all divided by 6g. So let's look at the components of this. As we're going to see, there's two components, and the first one is going to be that shear modulus, because we're dividing by 6g, where g is that shear modulus. And that's not a problem, because as we see in the question, we're actually given that shear modulus g. So we're actually happy in that sense, where we already know what g is. The only thing that we don't know is that von Mises stress. However, we have that nice long von Mises stress equation. If you guys have seen it a million times by now, so therefore we can solve for that von Mises stress. If we look back at the original question, though, we'll notice that we're actually not given the stress components. Rather, we're given the strain components. However, in order to do part A, remember that we had to solve for all of those stress components. So by the time you guys get to part B, you guys will know all the stress components. Therefore, you guys can solve for the von Mises stress. You guys already know what G is. So it's just a matter of substituting everything you know into the formula above. Nice and easy. Now, if we move on to part C, the volumetric strain energy, as you guys will see, we have two options at this point. And there's a very specific reason why it's at this point, and I'll explain that later. So the traditional way, which is what I call, is by using the actual definition of the volumetric strain energy, which can be calculated as P squared divided by 2 times K. So just like before, we have two basic parameters in this equation that we're going to need to know. The first one at the bottom, that K, that's the bulk modulus. And luckily for us, again, just like before with the shear modulus, we're given the bulk modulus K. So the bulk modulus isn't a problem. The thing that might be a problem is that P. What is that small P? Well, that is the hydrostatic stress. And as you guys remember, we can calculate that by taking the trace of the stress tensor and dividing it by three. And you guys are saying, well, Clayton, don't even bother with the trace. Just tell me what the trace is equal to. Well, the trace is equal to sigma 1, 1 plus sigma 2, 2 plus sigma 3, 3. So it's the sum of those diagonal components. So therefore, we can solve this question if we know those three stress components as well as K. Now, K were given right away from the get-go, so K is not a problem. And the stress components, sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, and sigma 3, 3, we calculate them in part A of this question. So when we get to this point, we're good to go. We can easily solve for that volumetric strain energy. And again, I call this the traditional way because this is the way that uh, most of you guys should choose to do it. However, since we're at this particular part of this question, there is something like I that I, <laughs> that I coined the quick way. So recall that the strain energy is actually the sum of the deviatoric and the volumetric strain density. So if we look at this equation here, we have U bar is equal to U bar deviatoric plus U bar volumetric. So if I look at these, well, U bar by itself, that strain energy density, we calculate that in part A. U bar deviatoric, so that deviatoric strain energy, we calculated that in part B. So if we look at this equation, we can say that, oh, my volumetric strain energy is my only unknown. Therefore, I can go U minus U deviatoric, and I'm good to go. So this is a nice quick way that if you know two of them, you guys can easily solve for the third one. And the same goes as, let's say I know the volumetric and I know the deviatoric. I can solve for the total strain energy, stuff like that. So it's a nice way to quickly swap between them. And it might be a nice trick, actually, in your guys' final, as you guys will see. Maybe you guys are given U as well as U volumetric. You can solve for the deviatoric right away without having to try and find any stress components. So 
just a little quick way to help you guys and maybe in an exam situation. But that concludes question number one. Should be a nice, easy, straightforward question. Well, at least I hope it is. Again, I know you guys are busy with reading week, and I really want you guys just to relax. You guys have had a long semester so far, so you deserve some time for yourselves. So thank you guys all so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in question number two.